In this video, we'll talk about T cell and B cell disorders. This is a fan requested video. So in this video, we would learn four major diseases. First, severe combined immunodeficiency, ataxia telangiectasia, hyper IgM syndrome, and Wiscott Aldrich syndrome. These are the four syndromes that we would look at. So starting with severe combined immunodeficiency. As the name suggests, there is a severe compromisation of the immune system. Majorly, the T cells are significantly compromised and their function is altered. Also, there could be problems in B cells and antibody mediated responses. So there are two kinds. First, there could be complete loss of T cells, but the B cells remain intact. And in the second type, there could be problem in both the cell types. So both the cell mediated and humoral immunity is compromised in this case. In the earlier case, only the cell mediated Im immunity is compromised and the humoral immunity is partially compromised. So obviously several aspects of T cell and B cell maturation is abrogated in these conditions and that is due to genetic defects. So let's see what are these genetic defects. So among major cause of SCID, we can understand there is a defective interleukin 2R gamma chain. Mostly this is X-linked and recessive. There could be also defect in the gene that produce adenosine deaminase. Also there could be defect in the recombinase associated gene which are required for VDJ recombination. So if you broadly see these, all of these are three important aspects of the development of T or B cell. So that is why T cell and B cell activity is compromised. Let us delve into details. So the IL-2 uh, gamma subunit, IL-2 receptor gamma subunit is associated with many important function and maturation of different immune cells. So if the gene which encodes for the common gamma chain for IL-2 receptor is mutated, then it leads to many problems. One of the problem is maturation defect of the T cells. Also, this is associated with X chromosome and it's an X-linked uh, situation. Now, this co-receptor is associated with many other interleukin receptors, such as interleukin 7, which is very crucial for B cell development. So the mutation in IL-2 can also compromise the B cell development. Interleukin 15 signaling can also be abrogated. That leads to a problem in NK cell development. That means one mutation can lead to plethora of symptoms. Now let's talk about the ADA deficiency. The ADA or adenosine deaminase is a key enzyme which is required for two important immunological process. One is somatic hypermutation and another is class switching. Both these processes are required for maturation of uh, B cells and basically it allows diversification of the B cell mediated antibody production. Without the class switching, several isotypes won't be produced. And without the somatic hypermutation, high affinity antibody cannot be generated. So if the enzyme that produce AID is basically compromised, then there could be B cell maturation defects. And again, we can appreciate how genetic defects can lead to uh, immune defects. Then there could be defective VDJ recombination when there is a mutation in the gene for RAG1 and RAG2. Both these gene products are actually recombinase. These recombinase enzymes are required for VDJ recombination and as you all know that VDJ recombination is important for antibody uh, production and also T cell receptors. So when these two genes are mutated there could be functional compromise uh, compromisation of these uh, aspects. Next disease that we are going to talk about is ataxia telangiectasia. This is a mouthful of term but anyway this is very simple. So ataxia telangiectasia mutated or ATM is a kinase that can recognize double strand DNA break and this is a very useful enzyme because this particular kinase is a sensor for double stranded DNA break. It can trigger a pause in the cell cycle and recruit repair machinery in the double stranded DNA break and in, it, it tries to repair that break and resume the cell cycle. 
Now, once there is a mutation in the gene that encodes for ATM, then there is a detrimental consequence because there would be failure at detecting DNA damage, especially the double-stranded DNA ones. Then there could be failure or halt in the cell cycle progression. So cell cycle would anyway progress even if there is a mutation or a double-stranded DNA break. And that would lead to a lot of mutation to be accumulated. That can also create problems in the development of the immune cells. Now there is a clinical triad for the ataxia telangiectasia, and this clinical tri triad is known as three A's. First of all, there is cerebellar defects, which is ataxia. There is spider uh, angiomas, and there is IgA deficiency. In spider angiomas, there are specific spider-like uh, skin patterns, so under the skin, and this generally appears either red or purplish. There is cerebellar defect, which leads to ataxia. That means a problem regarding balance, motor coordination, and speech. And obviously, IgA defect can increase the susceptibility for many bacterial infection. Now, the clinical findings of ataxia telangiectasia includes increased alpha phytoprotein, decreased IgA, IgG, and IgE levels, lymphopenia, cerebellar atrophy, and it increases the risk of lymphoma and leukemia. Now let's talk about hyper IgM syndrome. As the name suggests, there are too much of IgM antibodies. Why is there, are, why is there uh, too much IgM antibody? So let's see. So this particular uh, disease happens when there is a problem in the CD40 ligand. CD40 ligand is the signal 2 for B cell activation. CD40 ligand is present on the T helper cell. Now, when CD ligand, CD40 ligand mediated signal is defective, the B cell uh, activation is not strong enough. And this is an X-linked triad. When the activation is not strong enough, that leads to many problems. But before that, let me quickly tell you that clinical features involve recurrent infections, recurrent pyogenic infections in the early life, and also infection with opportunistic uh, pathogens like these ones. Now, B cell activation defect can lead to plethora of problems. First of all, when there is a B cell activation defect, there could be class switching problems as well. So basically, when there is a, a weak B cell activation, class switching doesn't happen. That means when there is no class switching, by default, IgM antibodies would be produced. And that's why there is a hyper IgM syndrome. That means too much of IgM antibodies in the circulation. Other type or other isotypes are not present. And the core reason behind this is a weak activation of B cell or partial activation of the B cell. That doesn't trigger any kind of class switching reaction. So this is how the entire genetic defect is linked with the cellular defects. The last one is Wiscott Aldrich syndrome, which is uh, a consequence in the uh, due, due to the mutation in the WASP gene. This code for WASP, which is an actin regulator. Anyway, uh, Wiscott Aldrich syndrome is characterized by abnormal immune system function, generally immunodeficiency. One can see reduced number of IgG and IgM, but an increased number of IgE and IgA. So there is an overall uh, imbalance in terms of different antibody isotypes. There is also uh, eczema, that means inflammatory skin disorder, which is characterized by reddish patches and irritation in the skin. There could be also reduced ability for blood clotting. And indeed, clinical presentation shows that there are fewer and smaller platelets. People can remember the clinical features with the help of the uh, acronym known as WATER. So WATER stands for Wiscott Aldrich syndrome and the key features are thrombocytopenia, eczema and recurrent infection. It also increases the risk of autoimmune disease and malignancy. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can support our channel using super thanks. See you in next video.